If you've ever snail mailed a friend, you've paid to get someone's attention. In the future, would you allow your listeners to pay to get your attention, podcaster? Spoiler alert, you probably already do. Hello and welcome to another Podcast Pontifications with me, Evo Terra. Podcast tech, more often than not, always seems to be looking for a way to get podcasters paid. And that's a good thing, right? I mean, many cash-conscious podcasters, some are trying to make a living out there, some are just trying to pay their hosting bills, but they're keen to try out new monetization angles. But what if your attention could be monetized? Now, Pat mentioned on Monday's episode, as a future roadmap item, that very thing for Pod Inbox, the option to add some sort of money along with your engagement. Now, that's an interesting model that I think is worthy of exploring on today's episode. You might have noticed for a few months now that there's a Boostagram corner at the end of most podcast pontification episodes, and lots of other podcasts do something similar. The initial name of a boostagram was based on a singing telegram, really, or maybe a candygram, if you are a fan of the movie Blazing Saddles. With a boostagram, it costs money for someone to send a message to you. Simple enough. But that's not really any different than the postal service, actually. Or even harken back to a time, if you can remember, when long-distance phone calls cost money. Now, the difference then versus now is who is getting the money. You see, in the digital world, the cost of transmitting a message is effectively zero, really. So we have no need for stamps if we're just sending an electronic communication, no telegraph operator, and the transmission lines that we use today to send all of those things already subsidize sunk costs. So today, when we pay to send a message, that money goes to the recipient rather than the carriers. And that's a good thing. Now, this idea of monetizing attention, if you will, tends to be pretty polarizing amongst podcasters. You're either in the pro-getting-paid side, where you probably see this concept as just an additional potential revenue stream and therefore a positive thing. Or you might see this as just one more consequence of late-stage capitalism at all costs, for their dividing the world into the haves and the have-nots. Now, both are valid positions, as are a myriad other subtle nuances and opinions found within those two camps. Personally, I lean towards the pro-getting-pay side, what I'm just now deciding to call the F-U-P-M party, although I can see the inherent vileness of the skeptics are worrying about with that. You see, it's an ethical conundrum, to be sure. But it's one we're already wading into, and we have been wading into for quite some time now. If you'll check out your notifications tab on Twitter, they already isolate. Twitter already isolates replies from verified users, which segregates the noise from the riffraff, I suppose. And in fact, most social sites have some sort of a badge or icon identifying the specialness of a select group of users automatically and by design, giving their posts and even direct messages an extra heft. Now, given the arbitrary nature of how those are doled out, and I am saying this as a person who is both a verified Twitter and Google account, I don't really see much difference between earning a badge or paying for a message to rise to the top of a podcaster's message queue. But there's an even more ubiquitous example of this already in the podcasting world. Listener support is huge for many podcasters. We have Patreon, Buy Me a Coffee, and myriad other services used by podcasters every single day. Some of them have special tiers that give members members members-only rights, if you will, like a members-only message board, or priority status to messages from paying members. We're already used to granting special rights to those who support our podcasting efforts with their hard-earned funds. So seen in that light, allowing someone to boost a message doesn't really seem all that nefarious. Now again, I think there are huge, huge opportunities for abuse. 
and this ass hattery will happen and this concept might actually perpetuate that I get it and I hope the developers who are making these tools and services do not ignore that I mean I guess they can if they want to build their own cesspool of the internet but we have too many of those right now and that doesn't mean we have to support those that don't do a good job however I think this is a space that's worth keeping our eyes on as people start paying podcasters for our attention hmm with that, I shall be back tomorrow with yet another podcast, Pontifications. Cheers!